Hi all, my name is Amber May. My Taiwanese name is Dong Yo Xuan. I am so proud and happy to be hosting our student engagement event. In a minute, I'll give a brief introduction of myself and the importance of the student engagement segment. And then I will introduce the three finalists, student members of AILA who won this year's video essay competition. Depending on the time available, we may take questions from the audience with our competition winners serving as panelists. So if you have questions, please keep them ready. As a little bit about me, I am a JD candidate in my penultimate year at Melbourne Law School. In addition to my role as the National Student Engagement Officer for AILA, I also served as this year's Vice President of the Melbourne University Law Student Society. I'm proud to share that for my work there, I was recently recognized with the Julia Gillard Female Law Student of the Year Award as bestowed by the Australian Law Students Association. To have a designated space to speak at this summit in a lineup of industry giants and brilliant thinkers is not only an immense privilege for me, but also a testament to AILA's commitment to amplifying all the voices in this community. Our legal structures are in place to reflect and uphold our shared values as a society. Necessarily, this means that the industry must adapt and respond to the changes happening around us. Here, the crucial role of law students cannot be overstated. Often, with less resources available, it is students that feel the impact of systemic injustices more deeply and more directly. Further, our positioning at the very start of our legal careers ensures that we are joining the industry with open minds and perhaps different perspectives that challenge the way things are. You will hear from some of those perspectives today. The video essay competition requested that our student members respond to this year's summit theme, which is many cultures, one voice and to detail how their experiences and their identities have shaped their interpretation of this theme. For me, personally, this theme resonates as a message of solidarity. The legal system demands of us a certain degree of resilience. However, the barriers presented to each of us, the, the instances in which this resilience is tested, are not the same. Within the Asian Australian community, there are stark differences in how prejudice and bias present themselves. For example, as a biracial person, I know that without invalidating my own experiences, some things have come easier for me than they do for others. It goes without saying that given differences within the Asian Australian community, there are enormous contrasts in the effects of prejudice and bias on the wider BIPOC community. By BIPOC, I refer to our First Nations peoples, to Black people, and to all people of color. Research on the model minority myth illustrates a very unique situation for Asian Australians. Through the stereotypes perpetuated around us, we have either one, our successes and achievements undermined because hard hard work and diligence or a certain type of smarts are expected of us. Or two, our hard work and our successes are recognized, but only at the expense of, or as an exception to other marginalized identities. On this point, one study found that Asian people and Asian women in particular were twice as likely as their peers to be stereotyped as intelligent. However, it's a double-edged sword because the same study found that Asian people were three times more likely to be labeled subservient or quiet. There's a harmful narrative that expects us to work hard, to keep our heads down, and to just deal with it. As such, it is our duty and our responsibility to make sure we do not play into these mindsets. A seat at the table that demands assimilation 
or that we abandon other groups is no seed at all. You cannot cherry pick justice. You cannot tolerate some forms of diversity while making no room for the rest. In essence, I believe this year's theme reminds us that within the Asian Australian community and outside of it as well, our many cultures must be united in one strong, firm, loud, and unrelenting voice. So without further ado, I would like to invite Jim Han, Joanna Betteman Nonato, and Gavin Chung in that order to present as this year's finalists, their winning entries. The first uh, speaker for today is Jim Han. He is a LLB student from Deakin and I'm so excited to hear from him. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Amber. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jim Han. I'm a career changer and a second year LLB student at Deakin Law School. And of course, a student member of um, AILA. Before commencing my law study, I was a sales manager at a construction company. I also used to work as an English and Chinese translator, as well as an international student consultant before I started working in Melbourne's building supply and construction industry. As a first generation migrant myself, I've always been interested in promoting cultural diversity, especially at workplace. When I first came to Melbourne as an international student myself, I immediately became attracted to its multicultural heritage and environment. Um, I guess I've been so fortunate to have met and been able to learn from many friends from diverse cultural backgrounds during all these years in Australia. And the more I meet people with Asian backgrounds, the more I find Asian cultures fascinating. There are so many countries, so many cultures in Asia, and every one of them has a culture that offers many unique and beautiful things that deeply attract me. While cultural diversity is generally more and more appreciated and celebrated in Australia, which is definitely a good trend, there's probably still not enough awareness and inclusion of Asian cultures in many places and many industries. And in my very limited experience, the legal industry or profession might be one of them. That makes me wonder that instead of just promoting community and workplace awareness of my own cultural heritage, it's probably a better idea for me to collaborate with people from all Asian cultures, as well as people who are interested in Asian cultures, so that together we are able to better engage with people in the industry and promote Asian cultural diversity with one strong voice. Since I commenced my law study last July, I've found that people at AILA have been doing such an amazing job to promote Asian cultural diversity in the legal profession and provide such a great professional network that brings together members of the profession with Asian heritage and those with an interest in Asian cultures. I'm grateful that as a first generation migrant and a law student, I have the opportunity to participate in AILA's National Cultural Diversity Summit this year and learn from everyone here today. I'm honored and delighted that over the next few minutes in a pre-recorded video, I can share with you my story that resonates with this year's summit theme, Many Cultures, One Voice. Now we'll just watch the video. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Jim. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of countries throughout Australia on which our activities take place. I pay my respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I'm excited to have the opportunity to share with you my story here. When I was 13, 
I went to California as an exchange student from China and studied in high school in San Diego for two months. It was the first time I ever traveled overseas. I guess you can imagine the initial culture shock that I experienced. But what I will never forget is this international cultural festival hosted by the school. Well, it's got a big name. It was like a high school talent show. But what was eye-opening to me was all the programs prepared by students from diverse cultural backgrounds. There was this incredibly cheerful hula kahiko, the traditional Hawaiian dance, as well as a Kyoto style dance performed by three international students from Japan. It was also my first time watching a Bollywood dance in person. Every exchange student was invited to prepare something unique from their culture. I ended up singing an old Chinese rock and roll song because although I wasn't sure whether it qualified, it was all I could come up with. I received a generous round of applause and bravos nonetheless. Every program that night was enjoyable, but what was truly mind-blowing to me was the fact that so many cultures were celebrated on the same stage. This experience opened a door to a whole new world for me. I started to not only appreciate my own heritage, but also enjoy and learn from many cultures. Today, like many of you here, I feel privileged to call Australia home and be able to embrace and contribute to our cultural diversity. Australia's culturally and linguistically diverse communities and the togetherness we all celebrate are the reason why it's such an amazing country with great resilience. But there's so much more I feel obliged to do, especially in the legal profession where there is still a lack of awareness of Asian cultures. That's why I joined the Asian Australian Lawyers Association as a student member last year when I commenced my law study at Deakin University. I truly resonate with this year's summit theme. Many cultures, one voice. It immediately reminds me of my experience on the high school festival night in California, where a bunch of young students from all around the world gathered together and celebrated the same thing, the beauty of cultural diversity. Today in the legal profession, while we come from many cultures, it is a privilege for us to join the force and share the same voice. That's a voice to promote our Asian cultural diversity by promoting cultural awareness, inclusion, and mutual respect. I'm hopeful of having an opportunity to work with you together to make an impact and help shape a more equitable and culturally sustainable future in both the legal profession and our Australian community as a whole. Thank you for watching my video. I look forward to learning from everyone at the National Cultural Diversity Summit. That was spectacular. Uh, thank you so much, Jim. Next up, I have uh, Joanna Bettman Nonato. She is a graduate lawyer at ARC Legal, and she has some fantastic insights to share. Thanks so much, Amber. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm very honored to present my entry as my interpretation of Many Cultures, One Voice. I joined this competition because the theme really resonates with me. Even at a young age, I've been very amazed with other cultures. So the first time that I saw a foreigner in my hometown in the Philippines, I was like five years old. And during those olden times, there's no internet yet. <laughs> so um, 
people make friends through pen pals. They call it pen pals. They, you know, they snail mail each other. So my sister had a pen pal. Um, she's from Germany. She's her name is Hiltrude. And that when she went to our little house in Manila, that was my first time to see someone who looks very different, you know, very tall, very light light skin, green eyes. And, you know, it just, it was, I was blown away because, you know, for a five-year-old and most of us are black eyed, so not black eyes. So it's, it's very, it was very special for me. Fast forward, um, I entered into my career and I have worked for multinational companies. So in that, I truly enjoy being part of a multicultural environment, um, as it is an avenue for me to be exposed to new perspectives as I also reflect on mine. So what are my thought process when I was trying to answer this question? What does it mean to me? Many cultures, one voice. Well, the first thing that came to me are what's personal to me which is based on my faith and what I love doing. And that's going to church and also singing. Um, I should warn you, though, that this video later on has some singing in it. <laughs> and then, um, but then I thought, okay, but what does it mean in the professional environment, in the law industry? That took a bit of thinking and reflection because I had to look back with my experience being in a multicultural environment and experiencing the collaboration, working together, you know, reaching that common purpose. So I looked at that. I actually formed that into a question. Um, how can people from different cultures have one voice? So I, I started to think about how did it happen? And then... You know, there were, there were values there that's integral for that to happen. There's acceptance, there's respect, there's appreciation. But without me saying all the answers to my question, <laughs> to that question, I will leave you to discover from the next video my definition of many cultures, one voice. Hello, everyone. I'm Johanna Bertumen Onato, graduate lawyer of Arc Legal. What does many cultures, one voice mean to me? Well, I came up with three meanings. The first one is it's a multicultural choir singing the same song. The first meaning of this phrase that came to me was my experience in singing with other nationalities in a Catholic mass. I am part of the Filipino Chaplaincy Choir of Melbourne, FCCM, and we sing in multi multicultural masses. We sang yesterday, actually, um, at the Migrants and Refugees Mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral. We represented the Filipino community. Other communities were also there, including Slovenian, Tongan, Sudanese, Vietnamese, Indonesian, and others. Then looked at the meaning of many cultures, one voice in a work environment or in an industry, particularly the law industry. Culture is not just limited to one's ethnicity. It is an epitome of one's beliefs, way of living, and habits. Each one of us is different depending on the environment where we were born, how we were brought up, and how other people, places, and circumstances have influenced us. My second definition of many cultures, one voice, is a group of people with different beliefs, way of living, and habits, working in harmony to deliver a unified purpose. Our unified purpose as lawyers can be providing options on how a client can solve legal issues, or winning that court case for a client. The individual members of this group accept that they are different. 
They respect their difference from other people in a way that they won't change their identity just to please the other members of the group. Now, this doesn't mean that this individual is being inflexible or feeling superior. It is about being aware of the boundary between adjusting to gel well with the team and being true to oneself. These individuals also appreciate what their difference may bring to the team. Different perspectives can provide different ways of looking at an issue. It can exude creativity and it can provide more efficient ways of communicating with clients or colleagues. So when the members of this group have that, they accept, they respect, and they appreciate their difference. And, and they also apply the same values to the members of the group. There's acceptance, there's respect, there's appreciation. A team that celebrates their differences. All the members feel they belong to the group and they feel that they are treated as equals. There's inclusion and equality, which leads to better collaboration. The third meaning is that we are part of a kaleidoscope world. I related to a song popularized in the 90s in the Philippines called The Kaleidoscope World. As for me, each of us represent the vibrant colors of the kaleidoscope. So I will play the song and I will sing it and this is how it goes. Every color, every you is represented by me and you take a slide in a slow Take a look at the kaleidoscope, spin around, make it twirl in this kaleidoscope world. Kaleidoscope world in this kaleidoscope world. Thank you. Wow, I've got goosebumps. Um, thank you so much, Joanna. And now, last but not least, I am very honored to be able to present Gavin Chung. He is a Chinese Malaysian Australian law student currently studying at Monash University. Please take it away for us, Gavin. Thank you, Amber. And thank you for the opening Welcome to Country Map. I would personally like to pay my respects to the Wurundjeri people on whose land I am calling in from today. What a privilege it is to address this esteemed audience today. My name is Gavin, and I am a fourth year law and biomedical student, science student studying at Monash University. Currently, much of the work I do is in the human rights sector with a growing interest in the field of space, law and policy. For the next few minutes, I would like to bring my perspective on what the theme of this year's summit, Many Cultures, One Voice, means to me. Several months ago, the Museum of Chinese History in Melbourne launched a groundbreaking research project on the rich and complex history shared by Aboriginal and Chinese Australians. Beyond ancestral links, it is well known our peoples share similar though distinct experiences of discrimination. It follows, for the multicultural community to have one voice, we must learn to empathize with one another. This may be achieved through history, art, culture, and even food. More importantly, however, we must have the courage to be vocal, especially for those in our multicultural family who continue to be disadvantaged and marginalized. We must lend our voices to our First Nations peoples, who have a culture spanning several millennia and 120 languages, yet continue to fight at a seat at the table. As an advocate for a voice to parliament, it has been empowering to see the 
positive multicultural response we have received as a far. And I hope this support only continues to grow. We must lend our voices to our Asia Pacific neighbors who are at risk of losing land, law and culture due to rising sea levels. After all, it will be our minority communities who will be most severely affected by the consequences of irreversible climate change. We must lend our voices to our asylum seekers, heralding from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. From my experience volunteering at the Asylum Seeker Resource Center, I have seen firsthand how it still remains difficult for these communities to access our legal system. Finally, and to end on a more uplifting note, it is, it is important to celebrate our successes together. Feel free to check out my profile to learn more about my work. I've left the link to my opinion piece, A Migrant Perspective from the Heart, on it for anyone interested. I hope you enjoy my video and I'm looking forward to meeting some of you at tonight's dinner. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Yinghua Gavin Chung. Song Yinghua, and I'm a Chinese Malaysian Australian law student studying at Monash University. I hope to lend my perspective as a first generation immigrant and human rights advocate on the current state of multicultural Australia and the future I would like to see. In the aftermath of late 19th century gold rush migration, thousands of migrant families who had been working the gold fields began to establish restaurants, laundries, furniture shops, and fisheries. Australia at that time did not take kindly to these migrants, with the white Australia policy designed to keep these alien races out. Australia has since become a land of opportunity for all around the world. Like so many Australians of Chinese descent, my family and I have also been fortunate to benefit from the prosperity our great nation has offered in the 17 years we have been living here. Others, however, have not been as lucky. Our Indigenous peoples, as traditional custodians of the land on which we have since prospered, did not have a seat at the table during the federation of our country. They still remain constitutionally unrepresented, without a voice when laws and policies are made which affect them. The voices of our Torres Strait Islanders are continuing to be ignored as the islands slowly sink due to irreversible climate change. Our country continues to ignore the best available science, leaving minority populations at risk of becoming Australia's first climate refugees. Harsh asylum seeker policies and media narratives have silenced and undermined the voices of over a thousand refugees held in detention centres. Of those who are able to enter the Australian community, a large proportion lack the tools and the funds to settle and thrive in their new lives. Finally, recent census data has revealed just over 7 million Australians, that's 28% of all people in the country, were born overseas. Yet, reports continue to show since the COVID-19 outbreak, there have been major spikes in anti-Asian sentiment and discrimination against Jewish as well as Muslim groups. While there is reason to be hopeful, given the present, present government's commitment on all these grounds, there is more we can do as the multicultural community. I am in awe of the hundreds of cultural traditions, ancestries, native languages, and unique experiences forming the tapestry of modern day Australia. I call on every one of us to step up in solidarity and empathy and to vocally support those who remain disproportionately marginalized. I will leave with one concluding thought. When I first heard the theme of this year's AALA National Cultural Diversity Summit, Many Cultures, One Voice, the famous Seekers song, I Am Australian, came immediately to mind. Perhaps the following lyrics will leave as strong an impression on you as they have on me. We are one, but we are many. And from all the lands on earth we come. We'll share a dream, We'll sing with one voice. I am, you are, we are Australian. Thank you. That was a phenomenal piece, Gavin. Thank you so much. And overall, I want to thank our three finalists for their efforts, for the thought and nuance they have infused into their entry. We do have a little bit of time for us to be able to hear from these three directly. 
and I've received two questions from the audience so far that I think really will help us have a, um, I think, thoughtful conversation. Um, for our three panelists, my first question is, as a law student, what do you anticipate will be a major shift to the way the legal industry operates? I think I will hear in the same order alphabetically from Jim first, then Joanna, and then Gavin. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amber. Such a great question here. Well, um, I'm certainly hopeful that one of the major shifts will be more opportunities for greater exposure and more nuanced learning being offered to law students from Asian backgrounds because such inclusion at an early stage will certainly contribute to the promotion of Asian cultural diversity in the legal industry. Um, I'd like to share with you my recent experience in extracurricular activities. I have participated in three moots and um, legal competitions this year. And while it was overall a great experience for me, um, I didn't see any law students with um, Asian backgrounds in those competitions, except for myself. I was a bit disappointed. And um, I talked to some of my friends also at law school who are also from Asian backgrounds, and they told me this. They said, um, don't you think it's a bit intimidating where you walk into the room and everyone else just seems more Australian than you because you are different. Um, I mean, they have a good reason for that because currently law schools in Australia and industry sponsors don't have a mechanism to include more Asian students or students with Asian heritage to more, get more involved with such great learning opportunities and exposure. This kind of opportunities and exposure can be really helpful for law students when they become lawyers in the near future. So I'd like to see more programs, more extracurricular activities um, running in the future and designed to include more students like myself. And I believe it's definitely gonna be one of the major shifts that about to happen in the future with everyone's um, contribution to the industry. Thank you. For me, I am also helpful that it would change that more and more cultures would be part of the law industry. Um, AALA has been doing a great job with this. You know, there's awareness now. And um, um, I think it would carry on. I I would also want to see more Filipinos <laughs> uh, participating in the law industry because I don't think there's much of us. Um, yeah, so for the students, I think it's really about, you know, like, yes, we'd look at the what what initiatives could come, but it should also start with us, the confidence that, hey, I can be part of this, and why not? All right, so I guess I'll uh, finish things off, but um, I think a big shift that I anticipate is more gender and cultural diversity, particularly in public decision-making uh, spaces. Uh, given my Malaysian background, it's really inspiring to see individuals such as Penny Wong, Sam Lim in political roles. And I think these role models uh, stand as, I guess, inspirations for law students of color. While this 47th current parliament is the most diverse it has been, uh, only four and a half percent of MPs are actually from an Asian heritage compared to the 18% shared by the Australian population as large. I think it must be noted as well that this is not diversity for the sake of it, but we must embrace the perspectives that different cultures bring to parliament as well as different decision-making forums. Perhaps this may be a bit more of a hope 
than uh, something that I anticipate, but I also hope that an Indigenous voice to parliament is established um, to ensure that First Nations peoples have a say in the laws and the policies which affect them. Thank you. Thank you, Gavin, and thank you to Joanna and Jim as well. Um, we have one more question, and I do believe we have time for it. This one's very thought provoking, I think. Um, so it goes, the legal industry can be a daunting place to join. For students currently studying or for many that are thinking about enrolling and embarking on this journey, do you have any words of wisdom? Uh, same order, please. Jim, please take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Amber. Again, a great question here. Um, I don't really think my words will be of great wisdom, but I'd love to share some of my insight. Um, I encourage anyone from any cultural background at any age to just join the force, become a law student so that you can work in the legal industry with everyone here in the near future. Well, sometimes uh, when thinking of the legal industry, it can be a bit daunting, but actually it's quite rewarding um, emotionally, culturally. I mean, you can do so much great work for great cause in this industry. And by becoming a law student, you have the opportunity to do that. And my, um, from my experience, it's definitely going to be good if you um, would actually sign your up, sign yourself up to like more extracurricular activities, like mooting legal computations or even some of the business computations, because today um, Australian universities have so many things to offer to students just because they don't have a program that um, specifically designed for um, students with Asian background doesn't mean we don't want to join them. I mean, uh, also um, those law student societies can be such great places. I encourage anyone to become an officer in those law student societies. I myself is a legal aid officer at one of the committees and I'm also about to become another officer at our Deacon Law Student Society, hopefully, finger crossed. So for me, these are great experience. And this is something I encourage anyone interested in studying law in the near future. Thank you. For me, if, if you are passionate about it, then, then why not? Um, it doesn't mean that, yes, it can sometimes be hard to get a job as a lawyer. Not all law students would become lawyers anyway. There's so much roles in the industry. And, you know, engage, engage just like, just like what Jim said, you know, you can just um, go for different organizations, go for ALA. I'm very indebted with AALA because I always attend the networking and that's where I found my job. I wasn't even looking for it. <laughs> And I got a job there. Um, so for me, yes, it can be daunting. Um, you can be someone like me. This is my third career. You know, like why, why am I doing a law degree at this age? Um, but but you know, it's really about your passion. If you're passionate about it, then go ahead. You might be working twice as hard as someone, but just go get it if you wanna be in this field. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to echo what both you, Jim, and you, Joanna, both said. Uh, I think it's very important for any young law student to take every opportunity available. A lot of the time, it's hard to know what your interests are at an early stage in your law degree. And so I think that the more experience you get, the more you can canvas what is actually out there. As Joanna said, a lot of law students don't end up actually practicing law and perhaps they enter a public domain or do something completely different and that's fine. But getting that experience and knowing you know, where to steer that ship is really important at an early stage in your law degree. I also think as Joanna touched on, uh, it's really important for you to build your networks. And I guess this means that you have groups to study with, groups to have fun with and party with, 
but also groups that you can work with. And that means that, you know, down the line, you'll be able to work with them or perhaps they'll pop up in, the in, in your future. I, I finally think that probably the best piece of advice that I've heard is fake it till you make it. And I think that every law student needs to know that because sometimes it's very easy to feel that imposter syndrome, but I think a lot more people are feeling than uh, just only you. And so just keep, keep pushing. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Um, I know I've taken notes for myself. Um, thank you all so much. So I think that brings us to the end of our student engagement event. I would, on behalf of Ayla, and I think on behalf of all of our audience members, want to congratulate and thank our three finalists. That is Jim Han, Joanna Bettiman-Onato, and Gavin Chong. My name is Amber. I've been your host for this segment. And I believe coming up next is a ministerial address. So please hang tight. We'll all be back shortly. Thank you all so much for, paying, for tuning in. <laughs>